Myth of Empires is an upcoming first- and third-person open-world survival game that is developed by Angela Game, an indie dev studio from Hong Kong. The game is set in 3rd century China, at a time where the ruling dynasty has lost their power and the country is fractured. During the closed beta, I got the chance to test out the game and here are my first impressions. Let's start with the character creation. The character creation in Myth of Empires is very solid. Plenty of options, with lots of sliders. Men, women, skinny, fat, big, small, or plastered with tattoos. My only minor critique point here is the lack of hairstyles. There is also a randomizer for those who want to jump right into the action. Like in pretty much any other open world survival game, you spawn naked and start collecting branches, stones and grass. Make some basic tools like a stone hammer and a pickaxe and collect some more. Food is the biggest concern in the early game, at least in this beta. The hunger bar depletes rather fast and once it gets low, the game gets very blurry to simulate your character's dizziness. A gameplay feature that I didn't like at all. Once you have a few weapons and tools however, hunting animals and getting meat is not a problem anymore. Myth of Empires has a pretty good tutorial. The main quest always tells you what to do next and is rather easy to follow at the start. The whole UI design is very good in my opinion. Yes, there were still some minor English localization problems, but the menu navigation is intuitive and the information is presented clearly. After gathering some basic stuff, the game tells you to build a shack and after that, it was time to get my first horse. The taming process is pretty easy. Craft some rain to jump onto a horse and ride it until it's yours. In general, horses play a central role in Myth of Empires. There is horse wagons, horse armor, saddles, stables and more horse-related stuff. Horses need to be fed, they can level up and have unique traits, weak points and talents. And they can also die permanently. After you have shelter and a horse, you can just grind away. Gather materials to craft something that lets you gather better materials so you can build more advanced stuff and so on and so forth. The gameplay loop in this phase is actually pretty addicting. It has that just one more turn feeling to it, where it is suddenly 4am in the morning and you wonder where all the time went. Progress happens via unlocking crafting recipes, which are tied to your character level. And the character level gets increased by pretty much everything you do, as well as daily and weekly quests. The crafting tree in Myth of Empires is absolutely massive and shows the game's scope. There is building, mining, farming, fishing, taming, cooking, NPC recruiting, medicine and much more. The game has in total around 600 craftable items. Players also have the ability to specialize in certain tasks. You can select certain activities like mining or horse riding for example and boost the EXP you get from those activities. Leveling up a certain ability unlocks passives on the skill tree, which has hundreds of nodes to unlock. Combat is another big focus in Myth of Empires. Weapon-wise, there are one-handers, two-handers, pole-arms, bows, throwing weapons and siege weapons. There is also a decent amount of different armors to craft. Here you basically work your way through the different tiers, from wood to bone to copper to iron and so on. Let's talk about the visuals. Myth of Empires is made in Unreal Engine and not only looks gorgeous, but also has a level of polish to it that I absolutely didn't expect from a rather unknown dev team and from a title that probably isn't on many people's radar. The out of combat animations are very well made and you can see that there went a lot of thought and work into it. Look at this scene for example, where the rain is reflected on the porch and in the water. Or here you can see that wildlife animals have swimming animations and don't just glitch into the water like in 80% of all early access survival games. In my time of playing, I basically didn't encounter any game breaking bugs. No disappearing items, no getting stuck in the environment or the like. I was honestly pleasantly surprised with the general polish of the game. The only performance related issue I had was ping related and this was apparently a common problem in this beta. Many people had around 100 ms ping, even when connected to regional servers. The developers acknowledged that 
and promised to investigate. So, what is the goal in this game, one might ask, or does it even have one? Well, there will be official PvP and PvE servers, and the possibility to host private community servers. On PvE servers, you basically do whatever you want. There is plenty of options if you just want to build and create. There are also many points of interest, like bandit camps, strongholds, trader camps, guarded mines and more. The map is huge and will feature different biomes on release. Myth of Empires also has a fully fleshed out NPC recruiting system that lets you hire workers and warriors that will work and fight for you. PvP servers will be dominated by politics, battles, wars and sieges. Which brings me to an important point. The game seems to be very guild-centric. Even on a PvE server, having a group is advantageous. Sure, you can level, farm, craft, build and all that, but as soon as you want to do some NPC raids, you will run into problems. There is no way, for example, to take out a bandit camp as a solo player, unless you're heavily overgeared or want to spend hours to cheese the AI. When it comes to PvP servers, Having a guild seems to be mandatory. There are specific modifiers that you only get by being in a guild, like for example increased damage, reduced weapon and armor durability loss, more mining efficiency and so on. Furthermore, some craftable items like siege weapons only unlock with a certain guild level. It will be interesting to see how the developers intend to prevent Zerg guilds from dominating the servers by for example filling up the server capacity during a fight and win every battle by default. Speaking of battles, let's have a look at the combat system. Myth of Empires has a directional attack input system with 8 attack angles. You can use mouse movement to determine the direction or bind every angle to a key. Blocking is also directional, but only has 4 angles, as far as I could tell. Shields are an exception and don't need to angle their block. The combat as a whole, and this is my main gripe with the game so far, feels very clunky and glitchy. I'm not a big fan of the directional block system in general, or at least I haven't seen a game yet where such a system leads to a fun and fluid experience. I also couldn't really make out an initiative system. Like sometimes you successfully block and try to follow up with an attack, but get hit again before your attack lands. I'm sure some of the problems here were amplified by the high ping but one can clearly see that this combat system is not a strong point of the game yet. Another thing worth criticizing is the poor AI behavior. NPCs can be cheesed very easily by abusing aggro, outranging and kiting them. It's a real shame that Myth of Empires doesn't get the combat part right, as I bet that a poor combat system is a major turnoff for many players in this kind of game. This game could be amazing with a good melee system and I really hope that the developers are trying to improve things on that front before release. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Myth of Empires is already a really fun game with a very big scope and these first impressions only scratch the surface of what this game has to offer. I think that if they fix some existing issues and work on their combat system, the game could definitely be the next big survival game on the market. Let me know in the comment section what your thoughts about Myth of Empires are. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like and make sure to subscribe to this channel for more content. As always, thank you all for watching and see you soon.